So um, let me start by um, thanking you for having me here and by stating the importance of the pregnancy window. It is um, a lucky time that we research in this area, researchers in this area have because it's uh, quite well understood and also uh, broadly accepted that the time in the maternal womb is a very decisive time. It's a very important time for the rest of your life. It, it can shape you and decide between health and disease. But this, is, this was not always like this. Our field started with some unlucky um, theories uh, proposed by transplantation immunologists um, that consider the fetus to be an allo transplant or semi-allogenic transplant that was basically ignored uh, by the mother that uh, was uh, immune suppressed. Luckily, um, this theory is not uh, longer valid and we know now that the pregnancy is the most fascinating natural model of tolerance and this paradigm change began with the seminal paper by Anna Tafuri uh, from Heidelberg in Science 95 where she showed that T cells during pregnancy are very much aware of paternal alloantigens and we are very happy and also very proud to have uh, introduce regulatory T cells as very important players in pregnancy so that so to prevent a fetal rejection um, um, by maternal cells. And we also contributed to the idea that uh, regulatory T cells are not only relevant for pregnancy establishment, but also for uh, its maintenance as paternal antigens are continuously be shed to the um, uh, maternal circulation. And um, yeah, and, and, and the regulatory T cell field basically exploded in the uh, last uh, um, 20 years. And um, many authors propose that uh, in pregnancy, the well studied and understood expansion of regulatory T cells. Um, is um, very good for pregnancy because it uh, um, allows tolerance to fetal antigens. However, this could uh, impair host defense and make uh, mothers more susceptible to prenatal pathogens. And well, we were not um, very convinced that this would be the case because um, I particularly don't think that one cell type can account for a, such an important process as pregnancy. So we uh, did um, a couple of works on B cells by that time, and um, then we got interested to see how is the T-REC dynamic in B cell deficient mice. And for this, we first work with mu MT mice that uh, do not have mature B cells and uh, observe that during their pregnancy, they are not able to expand the pool of regulatory T cells in the spleen or in the uterus as wild type mice do. So wild type mice can expand their regulatory T cell populations, uh, B cell deficient mice cannot. And besides uh, that, we also observe a correlation between the number of FOXP3 regulatory T cells and the number of B cells. So, we wanted to know if these mice are resistant to infection despite because they have uh, less regulatory T cells uh, or no expansion of regulatory T cells. And the answer is no. These animals are even more um, susceptible to uh, infection um, in um, the absence of B cells. And uh, what we observed was that using, we, we tried different doses of LPS and we observed that at, at doses that were compatible with pregnancy in wild type mice, we observed 100 percent of fetal death in B cell deficient animals. And this was not related with an increased inflammation. And for you to know how this looks like, these are wild type mice um, that receive LPS. Everything looks fine, no fetal death, clear structures in the implantation sites with fetus, placenta, and maternal decidua, and um, a very similar situation can be seen in B cell deficient animals. Um, 
with PBS, our control group. However, if these animals receive LPS at this concentration that is compatible with pregnancy in wild type, we can, a couple of hours later, we can no longer see living fetuses and no clear structures in the implantation. Um, to understand which, um, which cells, which subpopulation of B cells are responsible for this, we uh, proceed to transfer different B cell populations into these animals prior to the LPS challenge and observe that the transfer of effector B cells could not rescue from fetal death, but the transfer of IL-10 secreting B10 or regulatory B cells can uh, um, diminish to half the number of dead fetuses after LPS. And even better uh, was the situation after um, the injection of recombinant murin, murin IL-10. To confirm the importance of IL-10 and of B, of IL-10, what we did was to isolate B cells, total B cells from IL-10 knockout mice and observe that here no uh, rescue of fetal death, death was possible. And this is how um, our implantations uh, look like. Um, it was, uh, it, uh, we always like to, to, to understand if the data we obtain in mouse models have translational relevance, if this is something that we can, with which we can help uh, clinicians and patients. And I was very, um, um, it was uh, very nice for me to uh, be uh, the reviewer of the PhD thesis from Marilyn Denner uh, in the Netherlands, who did a beautiful work and also published uh, her work in a um, couple of papers. One of them is uh, this paper in Cell Reports. Marilyn observed, observed that uh, B cells are present before pregnancy and throughout pregnancy with a peak in the second trimester in the uterus. And she also observed that these cells are able to secrete IL-10. And a very nice, a very interesting observation was that the B cells were located in clusters together with T cells, including regulatory T cells. And um, so, to um, uh, and, and to finish this, uh, to finish this part, this uh, data support the idea of several cell types contributing to um, this immunotolerant micromilieu that it's needed at the fetomaternal interface. And going back, going back to our work, we were interested to know if, uh, besides being important for maintaining uh, maintaining the, 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 the balance between tolerance and immunity, if um, B cells are also relevant for fetal development, maternal B cells, and whether maternal B cell signally can somehow uh, interfere with intrauterine fetal growth. And what we did was to use different strain of mice. We use wild type mice, of course, but also CD19 knockout mice, like in CD19 B cells. B cell specific MIDI88 knockouts and B cell specific IL10 knockouts. And we use MIDI88 knock total knockouts as, as controls. And we were very um, um, interested to see that uh, the lack of MIDI88 signaling exclusively in B cells and the lack of um, IL10 in B cells, but not the lack of total B cells, was related with decrease implantation area at day five, eight, and 10 of pregnancy, as we could observe using high frequency ultrasound, as you can see in this picture. Uh, and on the bottom, you can see wild type and um, knockout at day 12, and you can see already at the naked, naked eye the difference. And um, the cavi amniotic cavity was smaller as well. And the most impressive results was observed uh, when we analyze the size and the weight of the fetuses and observe that uh, B cell deficient MIDI88, B cell specific MIDI88 mice and B cell specific IL10 mice had a very serious phenotype of growth retardation. Around 75, three quarter of the fetuses from these mothers were 
too small for age, were intrauterine growth retarded, and uh, this was even more serious for the uh, B cell specific IL 10 knockouts. For the CD19 uh, knockouts, the B cell knockouts, um, around one quarter of the, of the fetuses was growth retarded, and of course, as we knew, my D88 uh, knockouts are all growth retarded, but this was something that was already known from the literature. Um, we also analyzed by ultrasound the uh, placenta thickness, diameter, and areas, and observed that also here, these uh, animals that had a disturbed B cell signaling or IL-10 production in B cells had a decreased um, uh, placenta area, diameter, and uh, thickness. Um, having said that, the next step was to know if this defective uh, fetal growth after um, defect uh, after maternal B cell signaling knockouts um, was related also to some um, different susceptibility to LPS. As we knew already from the Mu and T mice that B cells um, play a role, regulatory B cells play a role in uh, maintaining the tolerance or the, the balance between tolerance and immunity. And here we employed a preterm birth model and we went, we began with the doses where we knew that also the wild type mice will uh, give birth earlier. And um, of course, um, my D88 knockout animals are resistant to LPS, so they had no problems. When we went down with the doses, we obtained uh, normal values for the wild type mice, but still all our B cell strains, uh, meaning CD19 knockout, B cell specific my D88 knockout, uh, knockout B cell specific IL-10 knockout, and also the Mu MT mice had uh, a quick start of birth, meaning preterm birth. And when we, when we went down to 0 0.2 uh, milligram LPS per um, body weight kilogram, we observed that both B cell specific strains, knockout for my D88 and IL-10 had uh, preterm birth while all others uh, uh, were normal. So these tell us that maternal B cell specific signaling plays a role in uh, fetal growth, fetal development, but also in their susceptibility towards uh, preterm birth. So that we um, so that we um, we are, we are happy now to have added a puzzle to the knowledge that we have about B cells. We knew already that B cells are important in early pregnancy by secreting IL-10, inhibiting TNF-alpha T cell responses, keeping uh, dendritic cells immature. And we know now that uh, through my D88, T cells are important for adequate fetal growth and are able to protect against inflammatory injuries at the fetal maternal interface. And with, and with that, I am at the end of my talk. I would like to give you a short summary um, uh, uh, about the, uh, today's talk. Tolerance is established early. T-Rex are important in its generation, but B cells are relevant for pregnancy and fetal development as well. Um, Something that we didn't talk today is that B cells can also have negative contributions to pregnancy. I can tell you more about this in the Q&A session. Uh, B10 or regulatory B cells are probably relevant for early tolerance, but are central for maintaining the balance towards immunity and tolerance. And maternal B cell signaling shapes fetal growth and development with important roles for my D88 and IL-10. And I would like to thank the beautiful people from my lab that is involved, who was involved in this work and um, the um, institutions that fund our work. And of course, you for your kind attention. Cool, thanks. We're, we're slightly overrunning. So a couple of quick questions and quick answers, please. So Alex says, do you know which cells respond to IL-10? Does IL-10 act to suppress maternal inflammation or does it signal to fetal cells to regulate growth directly? We have one uh, clear answer and one theory. One clear answer is that uh, IL-10 can uh, kind of inhibit inflammatory responses, TNF-alpha coming from T cells, but also from innate immune cells uh, as a 
counteraction, so to say, and we are also um, investigating if IL-10 is uh, somehow uh, participating in the remodeling of uterine spiral arteries because the fetuses are smaller and the spiral arteries are also not uh, well developed. So we are going this avenue and see if um, IL-10 coming from B cells is uh, involved in that too. Cool. I've got a quick question I want to ask you. I know maternal macrophages can end up in the fetus. Do you know for sure that T and B cells from the mother don't get into the fetus? Uh, what are T and B cells? Um, they're the cells you work on. I, 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 sorry, T and B cells. I understood yeah. T M B cells, and I was like, oh my god, what's that? <laughs> yeah. So, well, it is well known that maternal cells go to the fetus, established there, and the same is true for the other way around. We don't know for sure if maternal B cells reach the fetus, right. but the possibility is there. The right. problem with B cells is that they are very tricky to follow up on uh, in vivo. We try this with um, two photon in vivo microscopy, and it was very tricky to see them even in the spleen. So um, I'm not sure if this question is easy to answer. Okay, cool. Good. Thank you very much.